A couple of weeks ago, Ian Juby, aka Wazulu, said that a recent study published in Nature presents a problem for the theory of evolution. The Earth's core was apparently much more conductive in the past than what was previously believed. This means that current models of how the Earth's magnetic field has changed over time must be revised. Ian, you really come off as a complete idiot when you try to connect this article with the theory of evolution. Because no one is suggesting that the magnetic field is the result of living organisms reproducing with variation while subjected to selection pressure, thus causing allele frequencies and breeding populations to change over time, or that this means that the conditions on Earth at any point in the past were such that it was hostile to the life forms that are believed to have existed at that time. Ian, almost every discovery forces scientists to revise their models to some extent, or leads them to discover holes in their theories that they didn't know about. Every theory has holes in it. Discovering a few more isn't a disaster. It just means that there's more work to be done. It's simply not true that a theory falls if it has holes in it. A theory falls when it's replaced by one that has fewer holes and still explains everything the previous one did. Alchemy didn't fall because no one produced gold. It fell because it was replaced by chemistry, which, for one, explained why you can't mix things together to produce gold. Next, you say that creationists have their own explanation for the origin of the Earth's magnetic field and every other planet as well. You say that that model fits better with the available evidence and you link to an article by Dr. Russell Humphreys in Creation Research Society Quarterly, which I will spend the rest of this video making fun of because it's stupid. Let me quote from the abstract. God could have started magnetic fields in the solar system in a very simple way, by creating the original atoms of the planets with many of their nuclear spins pointing in the same direction. Do I really need to continue? This isn't science. Right away, Humphreys is assuming that God, his God, exists, created the solar system, and is responsible for the magnetic fields in it. Now, even if I grant him that, why would God need to align atoms to create magnetic fields? Can't he just use magic? I mean, he clearly used magic to create and align the atoms, right? Can't we skip the sciency bit if we're just gonna end up saying it's magic anyway? This is just an attempt to make scientifically illiterate people, Ian think that this is science. It's not. Now, I'm going to use some technical terminology that I will not bother explaining because this video would get very long if I tried to do that. Um, you don't actually need to understand it to see where this goes wrong, though. The Earth is a dipole. That's true. We know that it has a magnetic dipole moment of 7.9 times 10 to the 22nd joules per tesla right now. Well, give or take. So what was its dipole moment originally? Humphreys assumes that God made the Earth out of water. I have no idea why. The Bible doesn't say that to my knowledge. It just says that water was there from the beginning and then God created the Earth. It doesn't say God made the Earth out of the water. Now, the part Humphreys wants to get to anyway is that a water molecule is a dipole as well. So he figures that um, we can take the mass of the Earth, divide by the mass of a water molecule, and thus get the number of water molecules. Now multiply this by a water molecule's dipole moment, and you've got the original dipole moment of Earth which comes to 1.41 times 10 to the 24th joules per tesla, assuming that God magically aligned 25% of the water molecules. 
Why 25%, you ask? I supported this choice by pointing out that it increases the molecular order with a minimum of perturbation from the normal alignment. But it is a subjective choice. In the absence of any better criterion, let us assume that k equals 0.25 unless we find out otherwise. In other words, he calculated it using the highly technical pull out of ass theorem. Humphreys then assumes an exponential decay rate since creation. Don't ask why, we know this won't match the evidence found in old rocks. Regardless of whether they are thousands or millions of years old, fact remains that they show that the magnetic field has not decayed exponentially, but rather fluctuated over long periods of time, and even sometimes had the opposite direction. And by long periods of time, I don't mean long periods of geologic time, but long periods by human standards. Now, whether we accept the dating methods used or not, the geological evidence falsifies the idea of exponential decay. Humphreys later wrote articles that actually took this into account, but they actually got even dumber because they assumed that all the fluctuations in the magnetic field happened during Noah's flood. Humphreys ignores this and assumes a simple exponential decay because that way he can include his own made-up data point, a dipole moment of 1.41 times 10 to the 24th joules per tesla in 4000 BCE. Next, let's put in all the numbers we have. Assume that the Earth is 5,980 years old as of the last measurement of the dipole moment that Humphreys actually uses, and solve for the decay time. The best fit for the data set was obtained with a decay time of 2,049 years. Well, what do you know? This uh, actually gives us a result that's pretty damn close to that. 2,075 years. So what does this mean? Well, think about it. It means that if you make up a starting value way before the experimental data was collected, find a curve that fits that value and the relatively recent measurements, and then input your made up starting value and the present value into the equation for the curve, wow, you'll get a curve that fits your data set. Isn't that amazing? No, it's circular reasoning. So now how do we make this even dumber? Let's apply the same reasoning to the sun, the moon, and the other planets. Let's ignore everything we know about the structure of these bodies and assume the same processes are behind all the magnetic fields in the solar system. Does it work for the bodies we know the dipole moments for? Sure. It's still the same circular ass reasoning. Jupiter turns out to be a bit of a problem though. But hey, if it doesn't work, just change K. Quote, if we use our arbitrary value of K equals 0.25 in equation one to calculate Jupiter's magnetic moment at creation, we get a value less than this. If we use the maximum alignment fraction, k equals 1, then we get a maximum value for Jupiter's magnetic moment at creation. So it looks as if God pulled out nearly all the organ stops when he orchestrated Jupiter. Yeah, the metallic hydrogen has nothing to do with it. God just felt like giving Jupiter a stronger field. That's a much more plausible explanation. But let's see how Humphreys makes some predictions. Let's look at the dipole moments of Uranus and Neptune that were unknown when this article was written. Aw, he got the order of magnitude right. How cute. Why am I not surprised? It's not that hard to guess that it should be somewhere between that of Earth and that of Saturn. Probably closer to that of Saturn, considering that there are gas planets with solid cores, so I would I would guess the order of you know 10 to the 24th for both planets. <gasps> Ooh, I got it right. 
I'm not impressed. Humphreys emphasizes a few points at the end of the article. Quote, this theory is far more comprehensive than the dynamo theories. As far as I can tell, it explains everything the dynamo idea does, but in a simpler, more quantitative way. Unquote. Wrong. It explains nothing because it relies on circular reasoning, appeals to the supernatural, and unjustified assumptions. Quote, it also explains the presence of a field on Mercury, the absence of one on Mars, and the former field of the Moon, all of which puzzle evolutionists. Of course, the explanation given is no more reasonable than simply saying it's magic. Oh, right, never mind. That's what he is saying. Quote, the solar system is young. It would be impossible to understand the field strengths of the Earth, Moon, and inner planets on the basis of this theory without a time scale of roughly 6,000 years, unquote. Sure, if we assume a young solar system created using magic, this theory makes sense. Therefore, the solar system is young. That's called circular reasoning. Quote, the Bible is scientifically accurate, unquote. Yeah, sure. The Earth is a flat disk sitting in a giant ocean attached to the ocean floor by solid foundations. The moon is a light source. The sky is a solid dome with water above it. Stars are tiny lights attached to said dome. Snakes and donkeys can talk. Whales are fish, bats are birds, rabbits chew cud, the thriller video was a documentary, and yes, Ian, this is sarcasm, because seriously, that's all this stupid claim deserves.